is I just built this ground mount for my solar panels. I absolutely love it. I think you guys are gonna like it. It's an idea that I came up with. It's very lightweight, it's strong and sturdy. I want it to be something where I can move around the yard. But before I show you how I made this, I wanna go ahead and just give you a little bit of a quick view of this. I made this thing out of half inch and three quarter EMT pipe. It's very lightweight, cost me about $120 for everything. Uh, the framing that is, of course, not the solar panels. But I wanna go ahead and show you how easy it is to just move this around by myself. It's really easy to move. Uh, that's how I wanted this to, to be designed. I've got a small backyard here, so I wanted to be able to have it in this part of the yard facing this way and be able to get it back here and face it this way and just move it around when it's needed. For this solar panel ground mount, I'm gonna be using EMT conduit, electrical pipe, three quarter inch. I've got 10 foot sticks. I've got a total of six pipes here. Four of them I'm gonna be using for the legging and two of them I'm gonna be using for the brace brackets. My solar panels are 42 inches in height. Uh, so I've already figured out in my head, now every panel is different depending on what you get. Uh, but is what I'm gonna do is, the way I want this, the height that I want on my ground mount is because I, I, I live in an area where there's snow. So I don't want this completely too far down on the ground. But basically is what I'm doing is I'm cutting to length. I already know what I want. I'm gonna be cutting 49 and a half inches off this 10 foot stick. And then on one end, I am going to bend with my bender here on the arrow. I'm gonna make my mark six inches, six inches down. And then on the other end, 20 and a half inches down. And I'm gonna bend the other direction on the arrow and this is what it's gonna look like. This is going to be the lower end of my solar panel. This is gonna be the higher end. So I'm gonna make four of these. Next, I'm gonna mount these, they're, they're called fence brackets. Uh, I found this on Amazon. I will go ahead and put the link uh, down below in the description uh, that'll send you to where you can get these. These came in a pack of 10. Uh, these are gonna fit three quarter EMT. And I went ahead and I mounted in on both ends, my other bar that the uh, panels are gonna be mounted on are gonna go right through here, and you'll see that here in a little bit. But I went ahead, I used one quarter inch through bolts. I used the, the nylon tightener. I was worried that if I used a flat washer and a lock washer, eventually over time it would bend and it would lose its tightness. So for this application, I felt it was appropriate to through bolt I am using stainless steel on these. Now the uh, fence coupling or uh, whole, whatever you want to call this bracket, this is steel, same as the EMT. Uh, if you want to spray paint this uh, to put a coat uh, to prevent resting, you can. But what was most important to me is I wanted these to be stainless steel. That way I can disassemble this at any time without it uh, being difficult to do that with all the rust. But I went ahead and threw bolted that and I did both ends and I'll show you how I did that. But this is what you want, and I wanna have four of these, all four uh, footings that I had bent. As you can see, I bent this as far as I could without causing any dent or any damage on my bender. I didn't want a true full 90, because by doing this, my panels fit on here at a shorter distance, and I have more footing down here. If I did a true 90, then I would have lost some footing here on the ends. And I obviously, I want this to be balanced, well balanced, and uh, to stay in place when I have it outside in the ground. Okay, now here are all the tools that I'm using. I've got a table here that I know is level. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close enough for what I'm gonna be doing. And you'll see that there's a little bit of play in this bracket right here. But these are all the tools I'm using. I've got a torpedo level here. I'll show you here in just a minute. I've got 7 sixteenths uh, to tighten my through bolts on here. There's my bracket. And here's my 5 sixteenths or here 
to tighten my hose clamp. I wish I had a hands-free uh, GoPro on uh, right now, but I don't. But here's what I'm doing. So I got, I got the hose clamp here, and I'll be tightening this on here, but I'm gonna have to uh, go ahead and do it and show you. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of play, but I'm gonna stick a pipe in here. So here I have the uh, bracket, the hose clamp on here. I'm gonna tighten this up when I'm ready. But as you can see, you got a little bit of play here, but I don't want this to be snug tight when I'm tightening down on this to uh, through bolt this. I want just a little bit of little bit of play, just just uh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. That way, it's easier for me to slide this in. As you can see, there's plenty of play uh, from uh, side to side, but I want there to be enough play from the top too, because if I don't, this could really clamp down and tighten on it, and it'll be hard to get that pipe to slide in and out. And of course, while I'm doing that, I want to make sure I'm level on my pipe, which I'm not right now, but you can get the idea of what I'm doing. So I'm leveling this out. So I know my table is level. So I know I'm level here, uh, left to right, uh, side to side, and I know I'm going to be level vertically. Okay, so I've got this all tightened down where I want this. So this is gonna stay. This is gonna hold in place as I through bolt here. Now, as you can see, both sides, I guess you can call it pilot holes if that's what you want to call it. The only thing is, is that th these aren't a true uh, quarter inch. These are, I think, six millimeter. I'm also opening up this a little bigger. That way I get my uh, quarter inch uh, through bolt in there. But as you can see, this was intended to just probably use like a teak screw or something to get one end here. But I want to through bolt on this as well. And there's no hole here. Okay, on this other side. So what I want to do is I want this to be on the outside of my frame. That way, when I get the four legs standing in place and I put the pipe in, drill from this side, uh, from the outside of the legs, instead of trying to come in from the inside. So make sure when you're setting these in place, you got this hole here for this bracket, uh, for this right here, this pipe, on the outside. All right, so I went ahead and I drilled through here. Now you don't wanna drill this now, right? Cause this is just your leveling pipe uh, for right now. Um, so you just wanna drill these two holes here and then I'm gonna come to the other side and then drill from over here. I also forgot to mention that, yeah, these are quarter inch uh, stainless steel bolts, through bolts. Uh, these are an inch and a half long. I feel that's the appropriate uh, length on these. But I stick this one on first, so that way I can just slide this over to the other side, less than I have to take this all the way apart to get it on the other side. And I definitely wanna make sure these are going on the outside in, because I just think it's gonna look a little nicer from the outside. Not entirely necessary, but uh, I wanna go ahead and remove these labels myself. I'm just gonna scrape it with this uh, blade here and get it off. I scraped off the label. I'm gonna use a little bit of Goo Gone. You can use Goof Off just to get this gump off. Once again, not entirely necessary, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lettering from the manufacturer and my markings for my bend, nail polish remover, and uh, just wipe that off. Not a big deal, but uh, it just looks looks a little nicer and, and neat. See that? All nice and clean, it just comes right off. See that? Nail polish remover, just removes that. I just think it'll look a little nicer, not having all that lettering and my markings on there. For the most part, this brace bar here just slid in here, but there was two of them, two out of the four that I've done so far, and I still gotta do one lower one down there. I had to loosen these up in order to get this to slide in. My panels in width are 21, well, just, just an eighth of an inch shorter than 21 inches. But what I'm gonna measure is I'm gonna measure them for 21 inches uh, because I wanna have a quarter of an inch between all my panels. That's not necessarily specifications, but that's what I'm just going to do. Uh, I don't want them to be butted up against each other nice and tight. So is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out. Now I'm gonna have this be a handle on each end. I got enough where I can have a handle so this could be picked up and carried from both ends. But I'm gonna measure because I don't want these legs to be in the center or where I'm mounting 
my panels. So I'm going to just strategically plan and put them where I need them to go. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, here's what I got. Here's my uh, three quarter inch EMT frame. As you can see, I have four legs. I'm pretty happy how this is looking. Now is what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use some half inch EMT and I'm gonna have some crossbars going this way to create the strong triangle shape. And that will give this even more strength in keeping these solar panels stiff and in place. Here are my brace bars I made out of half inch conduit. These are the carrying handles. Nice and strong, lightweight. This right now, the frame itself weighs 25 pounds. Will be easy for uh, one person to just pivot, rotate this thing as the sun direct is directing and moving. Uh, pretty happy with this. This is uh, looking really nice. As you can see, I've got my ground mount frame here. I've got it upside down because the panels are upside down. This will make it easier for me to uh, mount the uh, panels onto my ground mount. I have the uh, three quarter inch strap, double strap. I'm just going to mount drill holes and I'm gonna through bolt these. Uh, this is how I've chosen to do this. I know that these do come with uh, self mounting brackets. Uh, everything's drilled and everything is uh, you know factory. But since I'm using my piping, this is what I'm gonna to wanna to use. This will be nice and sturdy and it'll create a nice strong bond. Make sure, now when these come out of the bag, none of these are perfectly square. These are all gonna be off. So when you put it on the pipe, you mark, make your marks or you drill, you don't have to make your marks. You can just drill your holes actually and uh, mount everything, but just don't put it all back in a pile and get them mixed up because then, then you'll be tweaking these because they, they, they just won't be, able to be perfectly lined up. So you want to just keep track of where you're putting them. If you're not, if you're going to go ahead and make marks, if you want to mark your your holes and then drill and then put them back on, just make sure you're not mixing them on because these are not perfect. Here's my three quarter inch straps. I've got the half inch EMT holding my box where I'm going to connect uh, the panel wires. I've got the uh, half inch flex water seal tight pipe. I've just got about a, a foot on here. This is the, the downside of the angle from the panels. That's the upside. So this is just gonna prevent any water from trickling inside here. Uh, so that's, that's how I decided to go ahead and get my wires running into this box. Now I've got my uh, panels standing up on the side. Look at how straight and level that is. I'm pretty proud of this. I think this is looking uh, pretty sweet. It's nice and strong. Initially, I thought this was gonna be about 95 pounds, but I think with what I've added on between the uh, extensions, the five and one, five to one, one to five, this box here and this pipe, and it's a little more hardware. I'm probably I'm probably just right about a hundred pounds, uh, so not not too difficult for for two men to pick up and carry and and maneuver around. Now I know a lot of you are probably wondering how am I going to keep this from blowing away because it's so lightweight easy solution. I plan on moving this up against the house uh, when there's a windstorm coming and I'm going to throw sandbags on the two ends of the legs of the four legs that I have here, one on each end. But as I mentioned, I got $120 into this frame, this ground mount alone. 
uh, between the piping and the, uh, the hardware. I think it was well worth it. Uh, I probably put about five hours worth of time total in building and designing. As I mentioned, I, I fabricated, I made my cuts and my bins, and I drilled the holes for the uh, through bolts. And uh, so about five hours worth of time and $120 into this idea. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Uh, I come on this channel quite often. I'm always answering questions to other videos that I have. But let me know what you guys think. I appreciate your support. Thanks.